screen share for, but that's fine. We will just um, we'll just skip that part since we used up a bit of time anyway. Anyway, as mentioned, um, so yeah, starting again, Adrian McNeil, co-founder and CEO at Foxglove. And uh, as I mentioned before, starting Foxglove, I spent five years uh, leading infrastructure at Cruise. And uh, before that, I was also at Coinbase leading the engineering team. But forget about crypto and NFTs. Today, we are going to talk about something that's far more important than crypto, and that is robotics. So by the end of this decade, robots are going to be everywhere. Robots are already really common today in industrial automation, but these robots are largely confined to cages. And the next generation of intelligent, collaborative robots is going to completely transform the economy and our society. I spent a long time working in self-driving car space, but what I think is even more exciting than self-driving cars is this technology spreading to everything from autonomous tractors, autonomous forklifts, self-driving lawnmowers, shipping and logistics robots, cyborg delivery, underwater robots, and, and much more. But for this robotics revolution to happen, there's still a whole missing industry of robotics developer tools and infrastructure. So developing and deploying robots requires a lot of specialized tooling. And that's things from deployment to fleet management, teleoperations, data management, simulation, and visualization. And we're starting to see off-the-shelf solutions here, but it's still really early and most companies are still building everything in-house. This is different from every other area of software development and machine learning, where there's a huge number of tools and libraries and frameworks to make your life easier. So this lock, lack of off-the-shelf tooling is slowing down robotics development for academics, professionals, and hobbyist developers alike. So we're pushing forward open source robotics infrastructure and developer tools. So we created Foxglove Studio, an open source visualization tool, and we also, we also created MCAP, a uh, next generation robotics logging library. We're maintaining a number of ROS packages and also we have about 20 different TypeScript libraries for interacting with ROS and other robots. Today, I'm going to focus on visualization specifically because visualization is a critical part of robotics development. Robotics development is not like traditional software, so we can't just look at text logs to understand our robot's behavior. We need to be able to understand how our robot sees and perceives the world. What are my senses seeing? How did the robot build a model of the world? What did the robot plan to do? And what did it actually do? Robots generate a lot of data, far more than traditional software. We have all sorts of sensors, sensor data like cameras, point clouds, depth clouds, GPS, IMU, wheel encoders. And we also have a lot of internal robot state that we want to record. So this is things such as objects that the robot is tracking, maps and grids, planned actions, and controls data. And visualizing all of that data is really important for everyone working at a robotics company. So from robotics engineers and machine learning engineers to product managers, QA teams and operations teams. We need visualization to debug live robots or to play back recorded data. We can triage failures, so we can replay those failures in simulation. And we can also compare the results of different experiments in either, uh, either the real world or in simulation. Before we can visualize data, though, we need to get it off the robot. And a universal problem in robotics is network bandwidth. We almost never have enough bandwidth to stream all of the sensor data off a robot at once. So typically, we find robots will send lightweight telemetry data, and this will give us an overview of the fleet status and the fleet health. This can be things like the robot's location, the current task it's working on, or low resolution camera images. And on the other hand, the raw high definition log data is usually recorded to a hard drive on the robot. These are things like raw camera images, and other sensor data, detailed recordings of the robot's thoughts and actions. They take up a lot of room. These can be anywhere from tens of gigabytes to over a thousand per hour of data. And uh, 
this data can be uploaded when the robot returns to base, or sometimes it's just fetched manually by the engineers when needed. To view and replay this robotics data, there's several options. Ross ships with a handful of tools, such as Arvis and RQT. And if you want to play back recorded data, you need to supplement these with command line tools, such as Ross Bag and Ross Topic. So a pretty typical Ross workflow involves at least three or four different windows open, rearranged on your desktop, just to play back a single recording. And for robots that don't use Ross, then there's nothing. Up until now, you either have to use Ross or you have to build all of this from scratch. But visualization needs are pretty standard across organizations. And this type of tooling should be available off the shelf without being coupled to a specific robotics framework. The current generation of ROS tools have uh, they've served us well over the past decades, but they have several limitations. Some of these that we ran into at Cruise. First of all, they're Linux desktop apps. So they're very difficult to get working on Windows or Mac. They also require your ROS code base to be installed and built locally. So that makes it difficult for product managers and QA engineers and operations teams to access that data without a full development environment. And the existing tools are only designed for live visualization. So as I mentioned, playing back recorded data often requires you to open a separate terminal window. There's no way to seek and scrub playback. Finally, it would be nice if all of these visualizations were integrated into one single tool. So that's why we built Foxglove Studio, an open source IDE for robotics. It's a web-based platform, so you can view data directly in your browser and download native apps for Mac, Windows, and Linux. We support both ROS and non-ROS data, so you can easily drag and drop a ROS bag file, or you can use our Python libraries to connect to different types of robots. Foxglove Studio actually began as a project called WebViz that we started at Cruise in 2017, and we open sourced in 2019. But WebViz only supported ROS1, and it had many features that were specific to Cruise's needs. So in 2021, we created Foxglove to expand this technology and to bring it to the world. Foxglove Studio is open source. We have an active community in GitHub and Slack to respond to questions, bug reports, uh, feature requests. And we see a re really, really wide range of users across uh, the community. So this is hobbyists to academics, um, small companies to large companies. Foxglove Studio is built to be extensible. We already support a, a wide range of data formats, like I said, ROS1 and ROS2. We also support other common data formats, such as Protobuf and JSON. And Foxglove comes with about 20 different types of visualizations that you can use out of the box. We also have an extension API so that you can build your own. Finally, it's collaborative. So you can use it as an individual. So like I said, it's open source. You can use it as an individual connected to a local robot or viewing files on your computer. But you can also sign in and share views and share data across your team. Besides uh, Foxsoft Studio for visualization, we also created the MCAP format for logging and storing robotics data. So this is a pretty new project that we just announced in the past couple months. Many companies that we spoke to were unhappy with the existing ROS bag format, um, or that there's a lot of companies that are not using ROS at all. And so as a result, we found lots of companies that have created their own proprietary file formats uh, in-house for recording robotics data. We decided to create an open source format that's specifically optimized for storing robotics data. So MCAP is pretty similar to ROS bag files, but it's not limited to ROS and it can be used by any robot. We do have an MCAP plugin for ROS2, um, but we also have libraries available in five different languages, so you can integrate uh, this with any, any non-ROS robots. And you can easily uh, view and open these MCAT files in Foxglove Studio just as easily as a bag file to re replay and visualize them. So I was going to jump into a live demo here, um, but since my screen share is not working and my GIF's not working either, uh, you'll, just have to, you'll just have to picture it. If you head on over to foxglove.dev, there's actually someone's thrown the link in the chat there. You can you can take a look at it. We have some videos that will let you play through that. So I suggest taking a look. You can also uh, just click on view live demo and you can jump straight into the app and, and give it a go yourself. If you have any bag files handy, just, just grab a bag file, drag it in. That all works locally. Even though it's running in the browser, we can just open bag files off your desktop um, and interact with them directly. Happy to jump into any questions. Um, I know we're a little bit behind schedule, so 
uh yeah any any questions people have feel free to put them in the chat <laughs>